Hello everyone. Welcome back. Today is Thursday the 25th of April and today is two very important events. It's the beginning of Jess Marie's birthday sale and there's also an work your oldest whip sale in cross stitch finish line. So I originally thought I would pick up my current oldest whip but and that would be Flowers of the Holy Night. However, Jessie Marie told us that for her birthday, our gift to her would be to stitch on something that was very meaningful to us. So thinking of those two things together, I did something quite unexpected. I reached way back. Jessie Marie, only for you, my Chatelaine. It had to be a Chatelaine for Jessie Marie, right? This is Alpine Seasons. I started this Chatelaine in 2016. And I started it with Tracy P. And she quickly stitched on it a lot more than I did because I was stitching away on this and was really frustrated because I did a section of trees that I thought were in petty point. And I did them that way. Come to find out, they were only supposed to be half stitches. But I'm gonna leave them. And I went through this morning and I read my instructions again for my Chatelaine. And I looked at the pattern again. And it's not as scary as I had remembered. So maybe I'm grown up enough as a stitcher to tackle it again. I'm not planning on bringing it back into my current rotation because I'm about to start mania. But I'm going to stitch on this today a little bit. I don't have a whole lot of time today. Maybe a little more tomorrow. But Jason Marie, in honor of your birthday, and in honor of my participating in that sale as well for my oldest whip. I've gone back to my oldest whip and I'm gonna be working on Alpine Seasons. So this is the initial beginning to show you where I left off. I had gotten the house done. This is where I messed up and did the petty point trees. But I think it's gonna work out okay because they look lighter in relief, you know, very much like they would have looked like as cross stitches because I did them one over one. So we'll just keep on going and I'll see what little bit I can get done on it and see if I can feel uh, that in the next uh, not too distant future that I might be interested in picking this piece up again. So, wouldn't it be something <laughs> if your birthday sale makes me fall back in love with this? Okay, JC Mary, happy birthday, and I'll be back tomorrow and let you see what little bit I got done. Hello everyone, welcome back again. This is Friday the 26th of April and I'm here today to give you an update on how my stitching has gone for the Jessie Marie birthday sale. Happy birthday, Jessie Marie. I hope you've had a wonderful time. When Jessie Marie invited us to join her for her birthday sale, she indicated to all of us that what she had hoped for was that we would stitch on something we found quite meaningful. Well, I love all of my projects and um, just was trying to figure out which one would be the most meaningful for me. And then I got to thinking about it and I remembered that I had a very meaningful project for me that was in timeout and has been for a very long time. Some of you who've been around uh, with me on this journey for the last three years will remember this piece. But back in June of 2016, June 22nd to be exact, I 
was so excited to start a project and Tracy P actually started it with me and very quickly into that project I misread the pattern and I did a, a tiny section of it in pity point one over one instead of half stitches and Tracy P privately let me know that she didn't publicly tell me because she didn't want to embarrass me I think but I felt completely overwhelmed by the pattern. I thought, I'm not doing this well. I obviously am not processing this information well. This is more than I can handle. I'm not grown up enough to stitch this. And I put it in time out. And it's been there ever since, 2016. I've looked at it a time or two in, in the container that I had put it away in, and I thought, I'm just not ready for that. I'm just not ready for that. Well, y'all know J.C. Marie has stitched a beautiful Chatelaine. I think it's the Frosty Knot Garden, if I'm not mistaken. And I thought, that's what I need to stitch on for J.C. Marie's birthday because she loved her Chatelaine and it was beautiful. And I thought, I need to tackle it again. I need to see if I'm ready for it yet because what more special piece could I do than to bring something back to life that had been dormant for so long because I was so overwhelmed at the thought of even doing it. So I brought out my Chatelet. This is Alpine Gardens. And as indicated I had started it in the middle and I'll put a picture in here of where it was when I started it and in the last two days I stitched the rest of the middle section of that house trees and mountains now what's next will be the half stitches in the sky with the bird. And then there's a bit of a walkway here. That walkway, if you can see it there in front of the house, is Petty Point. It is one over one. And so I didn't try to tackle that. It's too late in the evening to get started on that. But when I pick this up the next time, that's, the area I'll work on, the, the half stitches and the bird, and then the one over one. And then the middle will be complete. And I will start working on the very first wing, this big beautiful thing in here. That'll be next. And I think that's when I'll really feel like I'm working on a Chatelaine. <laughs> but here's what I wanted to share with you, Jace Marie, I know it's your birthday, but I think I'm the one who got the gift. I got the gift of falling in love with a piece that I've had in time out since 2016. I got the gift of self-confidence. Um, I pulled out that Chatelaine pattern this time and I read it again from start to finish and it was just clear as a bell. It was not overwhelming. It, it was I was surprised. It, I really felt like I must have just been in a place where I was not mentally ready to tackle such a such a piece. I was scared of it, I guess, intimidated by it. I'm not sure what it was. But I am ha very happy to say that I'm looking forward to stitching on it again and it's no longer in time out. So here I am right before mania on the eve of mania. <laughs> Uh, coming next week and um, and I've added another whip back into my rotation Which is fine because that won't start again till after mania anyway so Thank you, Jesse Marie for the invitation to help uh, you celebrate your birthday, but thank you even more for telling us to think about what we were stitching and to really pick something that would be meaningful to us because that's what got me looking at this again. And I'm very grateful to you for that. So appreciate it. Well, tomorrow is a stitching meetup at our local library. 
And so far, there are about 10 of us that have notified me <laughs> that they will be there. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm gonna take my newly framed Nantucket Rose with me to share with everyone there because they watched me stitch on it last time trying to get it to a finish. And I wanna show that to them and share it with, we, we celebrate these things with each other, as you know. And then I will start filling out my new book. I ordered one and I love it. And so here I am. There's enough for 31 projects in here. So it could take you, even if you start one a day, it would take you through all of Mania. And I'm sure you've seen it, but it has a place for a picture and then it has these different um, things to write in here. The pattern name, the designer name, started, finished, floss used, and fabric used. Well, if you'll recall, when I do my cards on any project I work on, I put the exact same information on these cards. It was as if she took the card idea and put it into this lovely little journal. So, I'm gonna use this journal for my starts for Mania, which will only be 11. And so, I may actually get to put in here 2019-2020, and I might get to use this for two years. But my plan is to not put a picture in here until it's finished. Then I'll take the photo of it so that my book will have my finished piece and all the information about it. I do this in a journal for all of my starts and finishes, but it will be fun to have one separate for Stitch Mania. And I think what I might do in addition to that is just take some uh, additional notes um, to put in my journal about how many times I stitched on it, how long it took me. You know, I, I record hours, estimate hours. Um, and I think that'll be fun. So I don't know, you still have time to get this as the time I am recording it. And I'm gonna put this up early, but I'm not sure you'll have time to order one. Uh, but I hope you do and I hope you'll enjoy it. At least keep a record somehow for yourself of what you did for Mania and you know when you start things and, and when you go back to it because just like my Chatelaine going back there, I could tell you exactly when I started it and I sat there and thought, how sad. I've waited almost three years to get back to this. So I'm very glad it's no longer in timeout. And so what that means is I don't have any whips in time out anymore. I made the decision to restart the nativity at some point down the line, and I do have fabric for it. So I still have it kitted, and it's going in my to be done sooner rather than later pile, which is right under here. And um, then I tackled my Chatelaine, and I've decided I'm in love with it again, and I think I can handle it now. I hope I don't come back crying to you telling you it's not working. But anyway, I'm gonna try. So that is everything I have for you today. I was just looking around to see if there was anything else I needed to, to tell you about. My stitching area is a wreck. And so I'm gonna take the rest of the evening now to straighten it up, reorganize my surfaces around the room into functional areas, and pack my to-go bag for tomorrow. So you guys have a great weekend. I will have wonderful time tomorrow stitching. And then my son has invited me to go to the movies with him because my husband will be at an airplane show all day. And whenever he's gone, my son tends to try to make sure I'm entertained or taken care of. It's very sweet that way. So we're going to the movies tomorrow night and out to dinner together. So this mother's little heart will be very full. Uh, I will enjoy that. Um, and then, of course, we'll do our usual uh, Sunday activities with our friends at church and our choir, something that feeds my soul every week. So I tell you what, I don't know if I could have a happier weekend. So I want to leave you with this quick story. This happened this week. You've all seen me stitching Raggedy Ann and Andy uh, projects for my friend Cheryl, and I've mentioned before that 
she and her husband actually sell Raggedy Ann and Andy collectibles online. They have a very large online store. I think they're the largest distributor in the United States of Raggedy Ann memorabilia. And that is really her full-time job. She, she works from her home shipping out product every single day. And she's always looking for something new to do. And whenever I stitch her something, it is extremely important to her. She puts it in her collection and I feel very honored. Well, on one such occasion that I was stitching for her, I mentioned her website apparently, and it's raggedyland.com. But someone who I did not know, I have never met, uh, was watching. And unbeknownst to me, had wanted a Raggedy Ann doll her entire life, since she was a little girl. And this is a senior citizen today, a lovely lady, and I'm not going to share who it was because I don't have permission to do that. But just so you know, my friend called me so excited because she had gotten an email from one of her customers who let her know that she had received her dolls, her first Raggedy Ann dolls, at the age of 72, and that she'd wanted them her whole life, and that her husband had gotten them for her off of the website that she heard about from Half Stitch Cross Stitch. Now, I don't know if she knew, um, you know, if my friend Cheryl has ever known that I give out her website whenever I talk about you know, what I'm stitching for her, I always try to mention that. I try to remember to mention it each time. But this is the first time we know of where she's actually uh, made someone very happy by being able to supply them with what they want for their dolls um, because of hearing it from me. So I want to thank you for that. You know who you are. And um, I just want you to know you made my friend's day. And... She called me so excited, thanking me for mentioning it. And I just said, what a small world. It's just such a small world, you know, who, who would have known? So I want to encourage you guys. I know we share a lot for our a small, you know, individual home businesses. We try to share where we buy our stash from, especially if we get it from an Etsy store or someone who's online, that kind of thing. Um, and I know that's a, a, a very select niche uh, that unless you collect it, you're not interested. But, you know, it didn't hurt to mention it. It made that, that lady very happy to be able to get her first dolls. So I thank you for that. And um, I encourage you to continue letting us be aware when you buy wonderful products from people, especially these small uh, business owners, so that we can support them as much as possible. Have a great weekend, and I will talk to you next week. And Jesse Marie, happy birthday. Bye. Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, April the 29th, and I have an update for you. Yesterday, we had an announcement from the School of Magical Stitches, and we had a little owl post. We were asked a while back to submit a list um, of our current whips, the at least 20 of them. And we were also asked to create a photo album of those whips and post them in the common room, which I did. So now we know why we were asked to do that. We got a post yesterday asking us to look for our smallest whip. This is the one with the smallest stitch count. And we were to work on it. And for every 100 stitches that we obtained, we would get a point for our house. And if we can fully finish it by the end of today, we get an extra 50 points. So I'm working toward that. I don't know if I'll get it done or not, but I've got it finished. Now to get it fully finished, that'll depend on whether or not I have a frame that it'll fit. So I'll be looking at that in a minute. But right now, this was my smallest whip, Witchy Washi. And as luck would have it, at my stitching meetup Saturday, I worked on this. But I still had quite a bit left to do. 
when I came home, I still had the entire dress to do and the shoes and the buttons. Well, I got that done. <laughs> so now I can count up all these stitches that I did in that dress and those shoes. And um, because I did finish it, I've got to press this again. I've, I've crumpled it up holding on to it. Um, now that I've finished it, I'm gonna try to fully finish it to see if I can't get 50 extra points for my house. Hufflepuffs, you guys, hang in there. I'm hoping to do that today. Anyway, I just wanted to pop on and let you know I had participated in that uh, little outpost. And um, also, I want to uh, select the recipient for uh, my Pass the Stash on the a Kiss uh, for Snowman. So I'm going to uh, turn the camera around here so you can see my random number generator. I've had 41 people indicate that they would like an opportunity to stitch the snowman. And since I want to get this uploaded today um, and get it out there if I can so that my next vlog starts with mania, I'm gonna go ahead and, and do the random number generator. So I'll turn you around and we'll select the winner. Hang on. Okay, here we go. This is my random number generator on my iPad. We're going for the A Kiss for Snowman to be passed along. I have 41 people who've indicated they are interested in having this to stitch. Number 24 is our winner. Number 24 is Joan Kabat. Joan Kabat. I'm gonna put a message on your message, Joan, and I will ask you to send me your mailing address for a kiss for snowman. Thank you to everybody who indicated they would like an opportunity to stitch a kiss for snowman. Thanks for playing along. Happy stitching. Good evening, everyone. I'm back for a little add-on to my video. Today, I had a very busy day but I was able to hit my big goal that I was working on today. In the School of Magical Stitches, we had to pick out our smallest whip from our whip list and album that we had had to post in the last couple of weeks. And my smallest whip, and we had to do that by stitch count, was Witchy Washi. So I mentioned that earlier today that I was going to be working on it and trying to finish it. And there's a bonus. Not only do you get to count all of your stitches, and for every 100 stitches you get a point, but if you get it fully finished today, you get an extra 50 points. So you know me, I was headed for that. <laughs> So today I stitched 1,499 stitches. Well, between last night when I found it and today when I found the post. This is Witchy Washi, fully framed, ready to go. Buttons and all. This frame may look familiar to some of you because it was originally going to be the frame that I was gonna put my Halloween tricks in. And it was just too small by hair. So I went back and I got a different frame, which y'all have seen. But this was my first one that I had picked out. And again, this looks like the old weathered wood from that old fence, which is what gave me that idea in the first place. But for this piece, I think it looks great. There's a lot of gray in the stocking and the dress is a dark blue-gray and um, 
so I just think it goes well and that blue is modeled a little bit to look a bit cloudy you know so I think it goes okay and I have it fully finished <laughs> so now I have posted this on my uh, event page and I do hope that I get the extra 50 points for my for my team for Hufflepuff so I wanted to share that with you so that one's done and you know what that means I have one less whip to carry into mania yeah that is exciting so because I have one less whip in mania I have now to I have to make a decision I originally had 11 new starts because I had eight whips. So what does that tell you? I may start one more thing or I may decide to give my Chatelaine a day in Mania. Probably gonna do that since I've started working on it again. So the last thing that I wanna share with you before I put this video up is some happy mail that I got today. If you have not gone over and watched Cheryl at Tranquil Stitches, and I'm not mispronouncing her name, it is Cheryl, S-H-I-R-L. If you haven't met her on her channel, you need to go. She's in West Virginia and she is wonderful and friendly and stitches beautiful things. But another thing she does is she makes project bags. And I've shown you a couple of hers that I purchased off of her channel. Well, she and I got to talking and I used to sew quite a bit myself. And I had a bit of fabric that was just wasting away in my stash. Some of which was very meaningful to me and I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. So I talked to Cheryl and I worked out a deal with her and I was able to get Cheryl to make me some project bags. So, I want to share with you what she made me because they came today. Oh, they're so pretty. So all of this was my fabric that I provided uh, for Cheryl so she could make these project bags for me and she was kind enough to do that. So here we go. This is one of my spring bags and she made this zipper find and it has a pineapple on the end which I think looks great because this is very tropical looking don't you think I love it this is gonna be for a spring or summer project for sure really like it then I had um, some remnants, some fabric remnants. They were pretty large remnants, but they were from um, a group of closet organizers that I had made uh, my sister Stephanie one year for Christmas. And I had made her um, a, a huge um, hanging tiered uh, bag for storage of pocketbooks. And I had made her one of those large covers that you put over your clothes in storage that was like a, uh, I think it was probably two big hangers on a bar. I mean, it was really pretty. And this is the fabrics that I used to make those closet organizers for her. And this is the zipper pull. It has an elephant on it because this looks Indian. It's so pretty. I love paisleys and this is gold fabric with a beautiful burgundy um, paisley in it and then the inside is a burgundy fabric with the little gold flowers inside and I think the zipper pulls Cheryl you knocked them out of the park they are beautiful so that one has very special memories for me because it will remind me of my sister because that's the fabric I used to make her gift. Then this fabric was also the inside here. That was also part of that closet organizing uh, that I made. But this fabric, this vintage looking fabric, 
I had never used. It was just wasting away in there. <laughs> so, Cheryl, I, she does not know that this fabric inside was used to organize a closet, but because this is uh, women's accessories, she's got me a coat hanger on here. I just love it. So cute. Isn't that great? I love these colors because they can be fall or because it's women's hats for different seasons. I could put anything in here that I wanted to, but a pretty lady would definitely go in here, don't you think? Very pretty. Then I have a special, special one I wanted to share with you. This was the one that I uh, talked the most with Cheryl about. This was the one that started me having a conversation with her. One of my viewers, um, probably over a year ago now, had sent me a care package. And it, I think we were doing an exchange in one of our groups. And one of the things that she sent me was fabric. And I showed it on my channel when, when she did. And it was fabric that had been made uh, in her country and it was imprints of plants, leaves of the trees that were indigenous to their country. And so I had some official fabric from her native home. And it is this beautiful green fabric with the gold leaves stamped on it. And I took some more of my fabrics that I had used for that closet organization system and I paired it with that green and gold. And Cheryl, I said, if you can't make me any other bag, would you make me this one? And she did. And look at this zipper pull. And look at that, it's a beautiful tree charm because, you know, here we are, the foliage from the country. So, lovely. I'm telling you, these bags are beautiful. They are well made and she sells them on her channel. She'll show you what she has, you know, up available for sale. Um, if she has any of these fabrics left over, you know, she, I told her the, these are for her to use. Um, so maybe she'll have some out of some of this. I don't know. I don't know if she has it. I know she doesn't have any of this left enough for a bag. I don't think, because I think I just barely had enough for a bag, but I think these are gorgeous and I can't wait to fill them up and um, put my new projects in them as I start kitting up more things after uh, I get through mania. That's it for now. I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you get back to uh, stitching or move on to watch another floss tuber. I had hoped to have footage for you today of a beautiful walk in the park. But as it turned out, unfortunately, my day was spent getting estimates to repair my car. I'm fine, don't worry, I didn't have a wreck. Unfortunately, I had a situation. Um, I was at the grocery store purchasing some items for our local food bank and they, it was a large purchase. And um, I had a gentleman from the store, young man was helping me to by putting this food in my car. And he had them in crates and he was slinging those crates around, putting them in the back of my SUV. I have a little RAV4 and he missed. And he crunched my tail light, knocked a hole in it. And it was very noticeable. In fact, it knocked a hole in the outer plastic and went in, hit it so hard, it went inside and broke something on the inside as well. The light still comes on so I can drive it, but the rain will get in it and everything else, so I want it fixed. So we walked back inside to the Kroger. Um, this didn't happen today. This happened a week or so ago, just around got around to it today to go get all the estimates. But um, anyway, the people at Kroger could not have been any nicer. They were just as nice as they could be, immediately said they would take care of it, file the claim that day. And um, it only took about a week and a half for them to call from their insurance carrier and talk to me about it and, and um, tell me what to do as far as, you know, getting the quotes to them and how to get them to them. And, and uh, we're working to get that repaired. And so hopefully I'll have it in the shop maybe next week and get it taken care of. But um, my whole day today was spent 
running around from place to place, you know, appointment to appointment to get an estimate because you have to have multiple estimates and they take the lowest one, I'm sure. Uh, but my husband was kind enough to go with me today and, and help me get that taken care of. And uh, we went to lunch and uh, kind of made a day of it to try to make it go a little quicker. But I was away from home a lot longer than I intended to be. And so I was rushing to get home uh, this afternoon to get my picture framed so that I could try to get those 50 points for, for Hufflepuff. So, uh now I've got to regroup a little bit. I want to try to put my movie together and put it up for you so you can see my last bit of April before we start in Mania. And I uh, wanted to share my beautiful bags with you and thank Cheryl publicly for um, making such lovely, lovely bags. They are, they're really, I'm very happy. I'm very happy with them, Cheryl. They look gorgeous. Um, Okay, I will uh, talk to you guys later. Be sure and uh, give me your address, Joan Cabot. I'm not sure if I'm saying that. Could be Cabot. So please forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your name, but uh, I will put a comment on your comment to let you know that you're the winner. And I will put my email address in the description box below so you can get in touch with me very easily um, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you so I can send this to you in the meantime everyone happy stitching and I know I won't see you again before you start mania so happy mania if you're participating <laughs> goodbye